Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today uh, I'm going to play around with a little uh, horizontal mill machine, a little Kearney Trucker Model 3H that I have here. Uh, a while back, I acquired this uh, sliding attachment that fits up onto the head of this thing and just haven't had a chance to put it on there and try it out. I just want to check it out, see how it works, make sure everything is, uh, works like it should, and uh, have that in the arsenal for projects down the road. So. Today what I want to do is come over here, I've got my uh, high speed universal head that's mounted up on the machine right now. I want to take this one off and then swap that head out and put on the uh, sliding attachment or shaper attachment as it's sometimes called. And like I said, uh, take it for a test spin and see how it works. So uh, let's go over here and see about getting this, uh, this head taken off. So to do the lifting for this, I have a uh, engine hoist over here that just barely fits in here good enough to, to do this. Let me come down just a little bit more. There we go. That'll get in there. And I need to loosen up these uh, bolts on the side that clamp the head to the machine. Uh, there's two bolts on each side. You loosen those up and just kind of slide that clamp out of the back, back there, where uh, the head will come off the front. And uh, once I get it slid over, I'm just going to snug them up so that it kind of stays out of the way. And I'll do that on the other side. Let me walk around. Same thing here. We'll just uh, loosen these up. There's a plate on the back here and there's a little indention where it will catch and lock it in place on that dovetail. And like I said, I just want to get it out of the way, move it all the way over and then I'll just, uh, just tighten these up just enough to snug them up where they will won't uh, slide back over and get in the way. And then the next thing is um, this head is going to be held in place on the uh, overarm supports and uh, that should be locked in right there and I should be able to just slide my overarm supports out and uh, leave this thing kind of hanging from my uh, engine hoist. Let me get a wrench to loosen that up. All right, those are loose. That just tightens the um, overarm supports up. And I'll put a little bit more tension on that head. And we should be able to now slide the overarms out of the out of the top there. And you see it just kind of came off, so that's good. All right, now I want to lift that head up a little bit more and uh, get it off of the machine. There we go, we are out of the way now. And we'll just kind of bring our engine hoist out and get her out of there. And now we'll just, uh, bring this thing out, one of my caster wheels on the front of my little engine hoist doesn't want to cooperate, but we'll get it out of the way. I'll just set it down over here out of the way. All right. Now I want to take the drive gear out. We'll uh, loosen up the drawbar in the back. That uh, drive gear has a centering stud on it. Is that turning the whole gear? Is that loosening? Let me put this in a higher or lower gear rather. That ought to do it. There we 
go. Let's loosen that up. All right, and there she comes out. So the shaper attachment doesn't take a gear per se to drive it, but it does have a little pin here uh, that drives that head. So what we got is we will slide this up on here and this whole uh, assembly basically fits up over this outside rim here. It engages with these drive dogs and that's what drives this whole head. So I'm just going to tap it up on there with a lead hammer here. It is a snug fit. I think we got it there. And then I've got some uh, screws here that we'll use to tighten it on there and hold it in place. Got you looking kind of in the back side of this uh, case, and I want to clean it out a little bit. It's uh, full of crud uh, from where it's been sitting for a long time. I've got some uh, simple green here. We'll just uh, kind of get this thing cleaned up a little bit, and then I'm going to re-lubricate that to make sure we got good lubrication in it. But I uh, thought you'd enjoy seeing kind of the back side of this thing so you can kind of see how it works. There's a, uh, that's, this is where that pin engages and you see this thing slides back and forth. So as this thing turns around, it's just driving this around and around and around. And uh, that's basically converting that motion to the linear motion that we need for the shaper action on this uh, head. Let's get all this cleaned out real good and we'll get some grease back in there and uh, make sure everything's good and lubricated. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of grease here on a brush and uh, make sure we got some good fresh lubrication up inside of this uh, piece here where things are going to be moving around. That looks good. I think we're good. All right, we are about ready here to see if I can get these on the overarms. I've never put one of these on before, so I'm not exactly 100% sure about how I'm going about this. Um, oops. This is a little bit awkward because my head is tilting out here. It's not wanting to go up on there straight, which would make life a lot easier if this thing hung straight up and down. Tell you what, let me pull that back a little bit. I'll pull these back a little bit. See if I can kind of ease it all in here. It's kind of starting to go up on there. That's actually going up on those uh, overarm just ever so slightly.
right, my overarms are more or less flush with the front of the casting, so I think I'm happy with there. I'm gonna tighten that down, and uh, I think we can move them back and knit it out on those overarms now. Uh, so this uh, nut here should pinch down on this, squeeze these together, and tighten them up ever so slightly. Yeah, we can move our head in and out now. I think I can actually take the crane off. Let me go ahead and do that. I've got you looking down between the crack between the, uh, the head of the milling machine and the shaper head, and you can see the pin, and you can see the hole. And I've taken some time to get, try to get these lined up pretty well. Hopefully, it's just gonna slide right up on there uh, without too much trouble when we pull that overarm back. But you gotta make sure you get that lined up. And let's see what happens here when we bring that back. Not quite exactly where it needs to be. I guess what we're going to, have to do is uh, I've got this thing in the lowest gear I can go right now. Actually, I think that little holder needs to come in a little bit to line up with that pin. Let's see how that looks. That's better, but I don't have my alignment just right. Let me spin this thing around again. All right, let's try that. It needs to go in a little bit more. There it goes right there. All right, we are up on it, and uh, we'll shut that off. There are a couple little dogs here that hold the bottom on. We just slide the dovetail in here and uh, clamp these in place, and I think we'll be ready to try her out here. So let me get these tightened on. There's one on each side. That one's done. Let's get the other side. side on. All right, before we go any farther, I think I'm going to just take a few minutes here and just kind of clean this whole thing up. <laughs> Things nasty. Just using some simple green here. Get off all these years of uh, gunk and grease and everything else from sitting in that warehouse out west. All right, that looks a little bit more respectable. I'm gonna put a little oil in here. There's a couple of oil cups I see. There's another one back here. Both of those have wicks in them. Looks like this probably had a cap on it at one time, but the cap is gone. All right, I think we are ready. Now it says do not run faster than 202 RPMs. Uh, we've got this thing actually set on 20 RPMs right now, which is the lowest that it will go. 
And when I engage this, what we should see is that head going up and down, just like that. Very good. I'm gonna, let's go to 124. You can see the uh, downstroke is uh, slower, the upstroke is faster, which is just like any other shaper or planer would do. So it looks like it's working just like it's supposed to. Spin a little bit of oil down in that. You might be asking yourself, you know, what would a attachment like this be good for? And one uh, thing that was often used for was doing internal uh, broaching of a keyway or something. Let's say I had a, uh, a hub that needed to have a keyway broached in it, and uh, I just dug around and found this boring bar over there that has a square keyway in here, or a piece of high speed steel that's uh, the, the width of a piece of a key. And uh, what you could do is just turn this thing on, and that would. Uh, go up and down and you would just slowly feed your table into this and cut that key slot uh, into your work. Uh, one nice thing about this head is, is you can turn it at any angle so um, it just rotates on one axis here but I could easily go up into a shaft in the other direction. Um, you could do uh, gear teeth with this. If you didn't have a, the right involute cutter you could just grind the uh, profile you needed um, on a piece of high speed steel and uh, shape those uh, teeth rather than cutting them with a horizontal milling cutter. So it, it has a lot of uses. It is kind of a specialty head for sure, but uh, uh, definitely has some uses and uh, it's something that I'm glad to have uh, for this machine. Well, there we go. Uh, we've got this thing hooked up and working. That was kind of my goal today was just to try this thing out and make sure everything was gonna work like it was supposed to, make sure we didn't have any problems with it. Really don't have a project to work on it with right now. Um, I am really excited to have this. This is, um, this is an unusual attachment for the, uh, for these K&T mills. Uh, on the smaller 2H mills, there were quite a few of these made. And if you look for one, you can find them, uh, but they are, I would say somewhat rare, but as you go up into the larger mills like this 3H and above, these things really, really get hard to find. Again, they're out there. They made them. Uh, they just didn't make very many. And I count myself very fortunate to be able to have found one and uh, salvaged it and be able to bring it in here and put it on my, my milling machine. Uh, I want to thank my, my contact out there on the West Coast that actually stumbled across this thing for me and uh, purchased it on my behalf and shipped it over to me. Uh, huge help there. I would have never known about it had he not sent me some pictures of this thing and just uh, out of curiosity said, was I interested? And, you know, I get a lot of emails from folks saying, hey, you know, look at this, look at this, look at this. And, and I'd say the majority of them, you know, it's not something that I really need or want or whatever, but every now and then, you stumble across a gem, and this was one of those cases where I really stumbled across a good, good find. So glad to have this. Uh, Going to make my mill a lot more uh, useful, uh, and give me something to, to play around with here in the shop and do some videos with down the road. So there you go. Well, with that, uh, that is going to be a wrap on this episode. As always, thanks for guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Really helps with my analytics on the channel with both of those things. And uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications. And with that, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.